Welcome to another edition of the Litigation Psychology Podcast, brought to you by Courtroom Sciences. Dr. Bill Kanaski, coming right at you. How's everybody doing? I gotta tell you, I I love me, I love me a good apple. Now I'm more of a green apple guy than a red apple guy. Gotta be honest with you. Little Granny Smith. Love me some green apples. The problem, though, this is my rant for the day. The, so now they put these stickers on each damn apple. And these things are impossible. And I mean impossible to get off. Now, I'm a dude. Don't have any nails, right? No nails. And I get this great apple. And I just want to eat the apple. And I cannot get these damn stickers off of the apple and i end up just putting my thumb right through the apple just i destroy the apple before i eat it is it really necessary to have a sticker on each apple with a barcode man are they putting crazy glue on these stickers you know what i'm talking about and you could be a red apple person you're you, you've got the same struggle Man, making me nuts. Gosh. Oranges? Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. See, I got my orange right here. No sticker. Bananas, no sticker. I'm not eating that peel, though, so. All right, uh, what are we talking about today on the podcast? We're going to talk about... Oh, tough topic. Managing stress during trial. Trial is stressful. The week before trial is especially stressful. And the process can get to you. So let's talk about how to manage stress during the trial process. Because I got to tell you, now if you have a weak trial, it still wears you down. Some trials, I mean, are two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. The one I'm working on now is going to be about three and a half months. Oof. Like you got to put your life on hold. And that's tough. But you can't put your health on hold. Okay. So there's really three areas that you got to focus on. To manage your stress during trial. You got to focus on your physical health. You've got to focus on your emotional health and you got to focus on your mental health. Now, I do separate mental and emotional. Remember, there's three parts of the brain. Your brain stem, okay? That's where your reflexes are. That's where your cardiac and respiratory centers are. There's no cognition in your brain stem. There's nothing you can do about that. However... The two other parts of your brain, cortical, subcortical, to where you get your higher level logical thinking and your subcortical emotional areas of the brain. Okay, I separate those two. I think it's important to do that. So we're going to talk about all three. So number one, number one thing you got to do, and everybody screws this up at trial. You have got to protect your sleep. Go just if, if you have a spare moment, go read some of the sleep research. You get multiple days of six or less hours of sleep a night. Man, really impairs cognition. Okay, not good for you. I think the whole country has sleep issues. Everybody knows has a sleep issue. I sleep like a baby. And not a whiny baby, screaming baby. No, like one of those babies that just sleeps. Okay? But I protect it. I pro absolutely protect it. And it's seven, eight hours of sleep every night. And even at trial, and I know there's a lot of work to do, you've got to protect your sleep. No sleep, no nothing. You're getting four hours of sleep a night. Because you're staying up till two, preparing your cross-examination script for the next day. You're not going to be sharp the next day. Okay, got to work efficiently. 
Got to delegate work to team members. Protect your sleep. It's really, really bad for you if you don't sleep well. Okay. Particularly at trial. So number one, God protects sleep. Number two, you have got to move. Yeah, you still got to exercise. I'm sorry. You still got to exercise during trial. Make the time. It doesn't have to be a long time. Even if it's 15 minutes. Get down the treadmill. Go for a walk. Go lift some heavy things till it hurts. You've got to, I mean, trial just physically kicks your ass. And if you're going to go weeks and trial and you're not going to exercise, you're going to pay for it. You're, you're going to feel like dog shit. I'm just telling you. Also, exercise will keep you sharp mentally. And it's going to help you sleep. See how all these things work together? You've got to figure it out. You've got to figure it out. Now, some of you, may wake up early in the morning to do this. That would not be me. I do not exercise in the morning because I like to patter. I like to drink coffee. I like to think early in the morning. I do not like to go to the gym. I like to do that later in the day. So if you're at trial, you may be one of these morning people. That's great. I think it's going to help you the rest of the day. You'll be upbeat at trial. You'll be ready. You'll be on your toes. <clears throat> Others, maybe not so much. Do it in the evening before you start your work. After the day of trial is over. <clears throat> I worked with an attorney out in Arizona. We're working on a trial together. It wasn't a long trial, it was like two weeks. Every day after trial, he and I went for a 30-minute walk. Come hell or high water. Left the courtroom, went right to the hotel, got changed. Before we looked at one document, had one discussion, and we go walking for 30 minutes every single day. Works. Keeps you loose, makes you feel better. It's good for you. Okay. You got to give yourself a break. Keep exercising. It doesn't have to be a lot. It could just be a 15 minute walk. Anything. Anything is going to be better than nothing. But we know this when you get into trial mode, you start skipping out on your sleep to get more work done. You completely skip the exercise. You're all guilty of it. Every one of you, you know it. And then another thing that gets just terribly skipped, horrible, your diet. Do you know how many trial attorneys I know that just completely skip lunch at trial? They just work. It's not good for you. If you want to think better, you got to eat right. You want to think better, you got to move. You want to think better, you got to sleep. All this stuff works together, folks. But people get in the trial mode, and boy, they're just work, 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 work. And you start skipping very important health behaviors. I absolutely feel the more physical healthy you are, the better you're going to do at your trial. The better mental acuity you're going to have. Versus running yourself into the ground. Okay. I think it's really, really important. Really, really important. So make a plan. How do you accomplish this? You got to make a plan. Plan number one. <laughs> okay. I am protecting my sleep. I am going to sleep. And you pick your time. And you got to get, ugh, yeah, six hours is not enough. Okay, get at least seven. Go look at the research. Seven hours. So you figure that out, and that's your protected time. No one's messing with that. You're not working past that time. Okay? Number two, you plan your exercise activity. 
Want to wake up early in the morning and go for that walk? Go. You're more the afternoon, evening person? Save it till then. You protect it. And then number three, do whatever needs to be done to get your healthy eating in. And do not be skipping meals. You attorneys are bad with that. I don't eat during trial. I mean, do you know how many times I've heard that? Don't eat lunch. Well, if you're not, what do you do? I'm I, I work during the lunch break. Okay. Well, okay. I you can work and eat at the same time. Really important stuff. Okay. It's too stressful. And not be skipping out on these physical things that you can be doing. Okay, so take care of your physical health. And by the way, you folks should be doing this even when you're not at trial. Attorneys, you know who you are. It's a stressful job. I'm aware of that. Okay, I work with you guys every day. Got to take better care of yourself. Life is too short to be putting 100% towards work and then physically you suffer. You don't look good. You don't feel good. Your sleep's off. Your energy levels suck. You're groggy all day. You're moody. Okay. Really, really important to take care of yourself during trial. Yes, there's work to be done. Yes, there's work. I, I understand that. Delegate. Make a very strict schedule on when you're actually going to work. And don't skip out on the health behaviors. All right. It's area number one. Area number two. Emotional health. You've got to stay calm and poised. You cannot get worried. At trial, as we all know, there's going to be great days. There's going to be good days. There's going to be so-so days. And there's going to be shit days. You know that. Can't be overreacting. Can't turn into a worry wart. Okay. We've got to stay poised. We've got to stay calm. Even when bad things happen. That's part of trial. You've got to keep your client calm. Clients bouncing off the walls. You keep them calm. You got to keep your team calm. And focus on the plan. Focus on the plan. It's very difficult to do if your anxiety is through the roof. It's very difficult to do anything when your anxiety is through the roof. Anything. Hence why I'm so busy training witnesses all week. Ah, man. It's like 175 degrees outside in Orlando right now. 175. That's the official temperature. At least that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Brutal. Brutal. But talk to me in February. Talk to me in February because I'll be just fine being right here in Florida. Um, yeah, emotional. Um, and it's 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 hard. There, there's a lot of pressure. Pressure from maybe the insurance client. Your client that's sitting there with you at trial, your witnesses, your team. Got to keep it together, folks. Got to keep it together. Got to keep it together. But it's hard. Trials are stressful. And if you run yourself down emotionally, you're not going to do as well as you could. You're not going to reach your peak potential. Now, we combine the anxiety, the worry, combine that with the physical health issues I just covered. You start skipping meals, you're not exercising, your sleep 
sucks. You're going to be a mess. You're going to be a mess. So again, how, how do we do this? You've got, everybody has a plan for a trial, but they generally don't have a health, a self health plan. You're going to be the best, best version of you. Okay. Best version of you. Now, what's another way to accomplish this emotionally? Now, you're not going to have a lot of time to do this. Carve out time for your family. Your friends, you may have to tell your friends to piss off for a couple of weeks because you're busy. <laughs> but family comes first. Your spouse, your significant other, your kids. Tell you this, no matter how stressed and emotional you are about your trial, big hug from your from your kids. That'll solve that problem really quickly. Okay. And maybe you only get 30 minutes with them. Maybe you're off site and you have to hop on Zoom with your family to get that FaceTime. Okay. Don't skip that. They're your main support. They're your main support, your family. Sometimes we forget that. I've been guilty of that. Okay. Make time for your family where you're not thinking about your trial. Now, again, you may not have much time, but a little bit every day will make a huge difference, just like the exercise, right? Okay. And you have to have the right mindset going in to the trial. Now, third area. Mental, okay? Your cognition health. You've got to maintain focus and positive thinking patterns. What I see on trial teams is a lot of negativity. A lot of what ifs. A lot of second guessing. Oh, wow, that plaintiff opening was really strong. Oh no, we're screwed. What if the jurors think this? What if the jurors think that? Not healthy. You have the plan. You got to stick to it. Can't see this. This is where it's exactly what witnesses do when when your witnesses are being deposed, and they panic and go off their reservation. Attorneys do that too. Then you start changing things. You worked up this plan. You had a plan. It's a solid plan. plan. Hopefully you tested it with the mock jury. You know the plan. And then you panic. You panic. <clears throat> and then rather than sticking with the game plan, you start throwing deep <laughs> on every play. Right? You had the game plan but you abandon it because you fell into the trap of negative thinking and boy, it messes with your head. What if, what if, what if maybe I should do more? Maybe I should ask my clients even more questions on direct exam. Maybe I should double the length of my opening to show how much I care. And then you start making dumb ass decisions. Why emotion? Remember, when emotion kicks in subcortically, you will get into various levels of amygdala hijack. Your amygdala and hippocampus take over your whole system. And then you start making illogical decisions. Emotions and decisions are a terrible, terrible combination. This is why you don't want to buy anything significant when you're emotional. Because you'll either buy something really stupid or you're going to overpay for it because you're not thinking. It's all about emotion, right? And it's hard. 
It's hard. Again, pressure pack situation. And you've got to keep it together. And so uh, mentally, you've got to think positive, maintain your high level cortical thinking, and stick with the strategic game plan. Do not get bent out of shape. Do not go off the rails. Stick to the plan. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. Now, what amplifies this is your team. Maybe you're the first chair and your second chair is in your ear. Blah, 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 blah. Wah, 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 wah. Remember the Charlie Brown teacher? Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, Charlie Brown Charlie Brown's teachers in your ear. And then that starts feeling your negative thinking, right? So you've got it. So everything I'm telling you to do here, physical health, emotional health, mental health, it's not just for you. It's for your team. Your second chairs, your paralegals. Okay. So what I would suggest as you work up to trial is to have a discussion with your team. Talk about physical health. Talk about everybody's, hey, we're all going to eat the right way. We're all going to protect our sleep. We're all going to get some form of exercise or physical activity in because we got to be on top of our game. we got to be healthy. And you discuss it with the team. My phone's phone is blowing up. That's how you know you're doing something right. There's two ways you there's two ways you know you're doing something right. Number one, your phone just rings constantly. That's one way to know that you're you're doing something right. The second way is you get criticized by a lot of people because <laughs> they're paying attention to you. Like Ric Flair says, Ric Flair. Woo! You may not like it, but you better learn to love it. Because it's the best thing going today. Woo! God, miss Ric Flair. Miss Ric Flair. He's still out there, barely. You've seen him. He looks terrible. <laughs> he looks terrible. He's always getting into trouble. Always get into the trouble. But it's important to have this discussion with your team. Keep everybody's head straight. Okay. Team meetings. Morning of trial, right after trial. Okay. Keep everybody reeled in. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Make sure everybody's on target. Okay. It's really, really important. It'll really, really pay off. Particularly with your energy levels at trial. Trial is exhausting. Physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting. And if you're not addressing these issues day after day after day after day after day, you start to wear down. Imagine a witness at deposition. Imagine if they went three hours straight answering questions and never took a break. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to suck. They're physically worn down. They're mentally worn down. They're emotionally worn down. That's why breaks are so important, right? Same thing for you, trial attorneys. When you're in trial, you've got to keep it together on these three levels. You got to stay on the same page. You got to communicate effectively, not emotionally. It's another problem I see on trial teams. A lot of emotional communication. Again, that's what that negative thinking. The negative thinking gets you emotional. I made a little hijack. Boom. There you go. Remember, the emotion comes secondary to cognition. Let me repeat that. Emotion comes secondary to cognition, meaning how you perceive a stimulus will determine on whether you get emotional or not. It's not the opposite way. Something happens at trial. 
you cognitive it's called cognitive appraisal your logical part of your brain cortical will appraise the situation and determine what to do with it and if you're a negative thinker your brain's gonna go oh shit i don't like this and then boom amygdala hippocampus say hi i'm taking over move over logical brain and boom now the emotions kick in a lot of cortisol production from the hypothalamus. God, bring a being a neuroscientist is so much fun, right? All this stuff is preventable. And listen, I, I want you guys to be healthy. Mentally and physically, emotionally healthy. But no one talks about this stuff. No one thinks about this stuff. Everybody just gets so laser focused on trial. It's work, 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 work. And you get up at 4 a.m. and you work, work, work. Then you go to trial. You skip lunch. Work, 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 work. Get off the trial. Go back to your office, your hotel. Work, 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 work. You stuff a McDonald's disgusting grease burger in your cake hole. Hammer down some fries. Work, 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 and then go and sleep for four and a half hours. And then you do that for two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> That's terrible. Hey, by the way, go do that when you're not in trial. Let me know how you feel. It's terrible. Plan ahead. Take care of yourself in these three areas. You're going to be far more effective in the courtroom. By the way, oh, by the way, since I talk to jurors every week, they notice when you feel like dog shit. They notice. It's obvious. Why? Because you look like dog shit and you sound like dog shit. You're at counsel's table. Your posture's off. Your facial expression sucks. You've got bags underneath your eyes. You're questioning witnesses. Your tone's off. The jurors pick up on all this. Right? How do you want to present in front of jurors? You want to appear healthy. You want to appear energetic and into it. You want to appear mentally and emotionally strong and confident. You can't do that if you're sleeping four and a half hours a night and skipping meals and thinking negatively. So all of these things I'm talking about, they all work together and they do one of two things. They work together to exponentially multiply into something bad or they work together to exponentially multiply into something positive. That's how it works. That's how it works. And I think it makes a big difference in the way you're going to perform in the courtroom. I think it makes a massive difference how a jury perceives you. And I think by doing these healthy behaviors, you're going to perform much, much better in the courtroom. You're going to look better. You're going to sound better. You're going to feel better. And that's going to have a lot of benefits. All right. Short podcast today, but you know, I'm a health nut. Very big on this stuff. Very big on this stuff. If you want to talk about this more, always reach out. Tell you what I do. Tell you what I've seen other attorneys do. Okay. Really, really important topic. No one talks about it. No one talks about it. 
Well, we're talking about it here on the Litigation Psychology Podcast. <laughs> All right, guys. Litigation Psychology Podcast brought to you by Courtroom Sciences. Dr. Bill Kanaski, I am out. See you next time.